In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the WiseNet AI cameras using the WiseNet Wave VMS. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to add our camera to our server. I'm going to right click on the server, add device, put in my IP address, username, and password. This is assuming the camera's already been configured with a password and IP address. You'll see some of our cameras have two channels. That's the Digital Zoom PTZ channel. Uh, you can choose to leave that off if you don't need it. You can delete that channel, number two, in the camera webpage. I'm just going to add them both here right now. Once that's complete, you'll see the camera showing up in my tree. Next, I can right click on the camera, go to Camera Settings, Recording tab, and I'm going to enable recording. I'm going to use one of my licenses and I'm going to apply a schedule of when to record. Uh, I'm going to choose to do motion based recording with the low res stream recorded all the time. You can change that to do recording always if you wanted and you can change your frame rate and quality if needed. We also have our pre and post recording duration. Once we do that we should start to see our record light on the left side and we should be able to view our camera. The next step is we can right click on the camera, go to camera settings, and we have the plugin tab. The plugin tab will show you all of the analytics that camera supports. It might take a second to load and you'll see all of my analytics, including any AI based analytics. What we want to do is start off on object tracking. We're going to enable object tracking and we're going to select all of the object types that we want to search for. We have person, face, vehicle, and license plate. There's a minimum duration. If you want that object to be in scene for a certain number of seconds before it detects it. And then we also have our best shot. Best shot is some additional metadata. It's a uh, JPEG thumbnail that gets uh, transmitted with the video stream to the VMS. Uh, and it lets you search your video very quickly and easily as well as it finds the best shot over a couple frames and it sends that. Uh, so typically you're going to select all of the object types that you selected on the first section up here. You'll select them on both and you can hit apply to save that. If there are any areas in the scene that you want to exclude, you could uh, put that section in. You can type in a name click to add and then you can draw an area. Now because this is an AI camera I don't need to worry about the trees it's going to filter the trees out um, because it knows those are not people and cars and things like that. So I'm going to leave that alone. Then we can create our analytic rules. We have our lines, our virtual lines. We can give it a name we can then choose our area and we can draw my line and we can also tell it which direction to trigger based off of or both. And then we can choose which object type. Do I want to be notified when only a person crosses that line or a vehicle and person or just vehicle, whichever way. And you can keep adding additional rules. And when you hit apply, that gets saved and stored in the camera. There also is an option to display on video that will put the overlay on the screen so you can visually see that analytic rule uh, as an overlay. And then IVA areas, we can again, we can create a zone. We can then draw my area for my parking lot. And then again, same options. Do we want to display it on the video? Which object type we want to search on? And then which type of analytic? Intrusion detection, enter, exit, appear, disappear, and loitering. And you have some options down here as well, of how long to wait for each of those. There are other options as well. We have um, exclude areas I mentioned. We have face mask detection if you want to detect if someone is or is not wearing a face mask. Once that's done, you can go to the objects panel on the top right and any objects that are displayed or, or, or seen by the camera will show up here and then you can use your search criteria. 
to search and filter for those. So here I switch to uh, another camera and you'll see I have my uh, analytic object section on the top right. I can select that and it's going to automatically show me uh, a running list of all of the objects so people, vehicles, license plates that it has seen. Um, notice it's showing me a cropped image. That's the best shot. If you hover your mouse over it, it will show you where in the image that um, object was. While I'm viewing live video, you'll see I'm getting all these different trackings, all these different vehicles are showing up here. There's attributes below each one, color, object type, things like that. If you do or don't want to see some of the metadata, when you're viewing live, you have options to turn those on or off. And you'll see there's your overlay. So you can see them all the time if you wanted to or turn them off if you don't want to see them. Again, when we're in my objects panel, I can just double click on a specific object and it will take me to recorded video of when that object uh, was detected. So typically, you know, when that car comes in to the scene or leaves or a person was walking, uh, whatever the case might be. My timeline at the bottom of the screen, you'll see is now color coded yellow to indicate that they're objects. So I could zoom on in and depending on if there are times of the day where there's no objects displayed, uh, you would see different color coding there. You'll also see we have our object attribute information. Uh, we can search by that. So if I wanted to see anytime there was a blue object, we can just type in the word blue and it's going to filter my list here. If we want to see a certain t vehicle type or vehicles, I can type in car and see just blue cars. We have a uh, knowledge base article indicating all the different things that you can search for. You can also search by area. So if you want to see only a specific area on the scene, we can click and draw a box and it's going to filter the objects. And you can see now on the bottom of my timeline, uh, the color coding indicating where those objects were uh, found. We can also select specific types. So if I only want to see people or vehicles, uh, we can choose that from here. And then we can also choose different time periods for the entire timeline that's on uh, the screen here. We can again zoom in and out to filter that list. Once you have your system detecting your attributes, you can also create event rules. So I can add a new rule. I'm going to choose analytic event. I'm going to choose that camera. And then we can choose the analytic for that camera. Uh, so virtual line crossing, uh, enter, exit, loiter, uh, or anytime that object is detected, anytime a person is detected in a restricted area, for example, um, we can choose that. We can choose a schedule of when this rule should apply. And then we can tell it what should it do. Should it create a bookmark? Should it uh, start recording at a different frame rate? Play a sound file, send a mobile push notification, display it on the desktop client. Uh, lots of options. To learn more about this and other exciting Hanwha products, subscribe to our YouTube channel or visit us at hanwhasecurity.com.